What's up, Navigation Nation? We are back with our contest winner, Matt King. How, how's it going, Matt? Hey, man. I'm doing good. How are you? Doing good. So we are back to do a little update and, and make some trades. Need to make a couple adjustments, uh, close some things, add some things. So we've got, got a busy busy little day here that we need to do some stuff. But let's, uh, let's show everybody kind of a, a quick recap of where we're at here. We are in, we're in four different positions. We've got NatGas, we've got the NASDAQ, we've got Costco, and we've got EWZ. So if you hover over on the NASDAQ to give an idea of kind of where we're at there, that has kind of been our problem child for, if you just want to hover over on the uh, account statement side. Oh, sorry. There we go. Yeah, there you go. So. NASDAQ has kind of been our problem child. You can see on the on the December contract, we were down a little over $1,700, and we rolled. And so now in the uh, NQH contract, uh, we're, we're, we've made back uh, a little over $1,500. So we're only down less than a couple hundred bucks on the NASDAQ. So it's it's started to cooperate. And I want to point that out because that that's just that's the power of staying mechanical. That's the power of rolling and adjusting. Um, now, obviously, with with what we're dealing with here, a finite amount of time. We've only got we only we're only trading for three months, so you know, hopefully, hopefully, you can kind of see the value of that mechanical rolling and and doing this constantly over time. How you can kind of work your way out of something that goes against you. Obviously, we're pushing up against it. Today is December eighth, so we've only got about three weeks left. Uh, so you know, hopefully, we can. We can make back some of some of what we lost and, and get you uh, you know get you some profit, uh, and that's what we're going to work on today. And the the big problem child now that we're seeing, if you kind of hover down over Costco, is Costco made a huge move higher, and so we're down a little over nineteen hundred bucks on Costco. And let's just let's just go to the let's go to the chart in Costco to start with, and let's let's deal with that one right now. Okay. This is, yep, this is it. So you can see we had that huge move up uh, last week, and you know I think I think part of the thing is you know with with tax reform going on, a lot of these retail stocks have exploded higher in anticipation that the new tax reform is going to help retailers. So you know it, it exploded higher on us, busted out of our range. Now you can see right there by the little blue light bulb that we've got earnings coming up in a few days in Costco. The goal with this was to be out of the trade before earnings. Didn't want to necessarily hold it through earnings uh, because of the, the volatility that surrounds earnings. But So if you go to our Analyze tab. Yep, yep, coming over. What you'll see is it, it blew through, implied volatility spiked up. So we're down about 1900 bucks. So, so the decision here is we're taking into consideration is if we didn't have this finite amount of time, three weeks left, I might say let's make the necess you know the mechanical adjustment, stay in the trade, and and even and even play it through earnings. You know when you're when you're taking a long term approach, you you can do that. But with this finite amount of time, I don't necessarily want to gamble and say okay, hopefully Costco doesn't have very good earnings and it bounces back into our range and we make some money. Because if it explodes higher after earnings, you know we 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 could take max loss on this trade of over thirty eight hundred bucks, and I just I don't want to put the account in that position. I don't want to put you in that position. So for this case, the the thought process behind this is, I'm saying we just close out of this trade and redeploy that capital into something else that I think we have a higher prob higher probability chance of making some money in the next few weeks. Sounds good to me. So yeah. it, it's a it's a hard it's a hard loss to stomach. Uh, obviously, I mean this this happens. This is trading. You gotta you gotta deal with losses. Not all of them are gonna be winners, but uh, unfortunately, it happened kind of in this finite amount of time frame. So in this case, yeah. let's, let's just close that out and say goodbye to Costco. Yeah, we can do that. You want to do that right now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Okay. Just go back to. So you can just highlight all the legs down below. Yeah, we have. This is our one with the uh, all four. There we go. Yeah, and then just right-click, close. Create closing. 
Is it, uh, is it this one up here at the top? Yep, and we're going to buy back that iron condor. Back iron. There's a lot going on on there. By the way, I did get a, uh, I, I got a question on YouTube after posting our, when we entered this trade. And the question was, you know, you're risking a little over $3,800. That's more than 5% of your capital, uh, which is kind of exceeds the, the amount of uh, capital that we typically want to risk on any one trade. And, and the one thing, the one reason I, uh, I, I did this thinking, you know, this is, this is okay in this situation is because we're, we weren't, we weren't going to wait for max loss. You know, we we're going to either manage our winners or like in this case, we're managing a loser to get out before we hit max loss. So, so that's why, and I kind of answered, I answered the individual on YouTube that way, but just wanted to make sure everybody else understood kind of the, the thought process behind that as well. Good call. Good call. Thank you for bringing that up. So, uh, uh we've got, uh, it, 318s, the midpoint, 344, the natural. So let's kick that up to about 325, about three, yeah, 324. That's fine. Let's try to get filled there. Try that. Okay, that took. Yeah, it actually got, we actually got filled right at mid price at 318. So that's good. Yep. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. So bye bye, Costco. Good riddance. <laughs> Sorry, I really didn't want to take the loss, but. Yep. You know, if it's going to save us from taking a bigger loss, then, uh, you know, it is what it is. Right. So let's go back to, uh, well, let's just hover over our, our ones that we're not doing anything with yet. We've got we've got NASDAQ. Hover over NQ. Yep. So like I said, it's it's starting to play nice for us. It's still still well within our range. If we get, get a little bit more down movement, a little bit more contraction in implied volatility over the next couple of weeks, uh, we should make out fairly nicely on this. Obviously, if it moves higher, uh, that's that's what we don't want to happen. Gotcha. And then on EWZ, we've uh, we've got some decent implied volatility contraction. We just need a little bit more time to pass before we book any book any winners in EWZ. Mm -hmm. And then let's go to Nat Gas, which is which has moved against us a little bit to the downside. So it's it's breached our it's breached our downside. Uh, I I waited until it breached our our break even as opposed to the short strike just to give it a little bit more time because there is a little bit of premium in those options. Now uh, a couple things we're we're 18 days to expiration. So as we teach in the course, anytime you kind of get under that 21 days to expiration, the gamma accelerates. The the risk versus your reward starts to accelerate as you get closer to expiration. So. We want to do two things here. We want to roll the untested side down. So we want to roll the calls down closer to price. And then with just 18 days to expiration, we're going to roll this out from January to the February cycle. Got it. So in this case, because the because we can't do a one-click roll with futures, let's just do this. So just make a note that our put is 295. Is the 295 put. So we're going to, with our breached strike, we're going to keep that at the exact same strike of 2.95. And then we'll, we'll determine what the call strike is when we roll it. But let's just go ahead and close out this entire spread. Okay. And can we do that all at once? We don't do that all at once. Yeah, you can close both of them at the same time. Okay. Since we're rolling the whole thing out to February. Got it. Great closing by, by yeah, that's right. And kick it up one tick. One ticker. There we Is go. that right? Yeah, yep. that's where we should should get filled. Go ahead and confirm and send. And we're filled. All right, All right. we're out of that one for now, and then we can go back into that one. That was. Yeah, so I go guess. ahead and click on NG. Yep. Oh, we want to go back to the tree tab here. We want to look for the cycle with 49 days in the financial. There you go. Not, not physical, but financial. Right. Coming down here. So when we roll our calls down, you remember where we want to roll our calls down to? Kind of what, what delta? 
Uh, we want to roll them down to 30, about 30 delta. Um, yep. Now, that was, there was the call side that we were going to put right at 295, though, right? That was actually the put side. Or, oh, that was the put. Gosh, it was like five seconds ago. We just went over that, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In that case, we're going to around 30 on this one, correct? Correct. Okay. And so we can select that. I don't think I'd set that one up. 30. Uh, selling single. Uh, actually, we're going to sell a strangle. Sh okay. Right back into the strangles. And then we will just make sure the put is at the 2.95. There we go. Wait, 2.95. And uh, do you want to bring this? Yeah, you can bring it down one tick. Yeah, right there. Uh -huh. Okay. And then let's go ahead and analyze that before we send it. Yeah, good call. Good call. Analyze the trade. Let's look, take a look at this. Let's see any strangeness. Set the slices. There you go. So what we've done here, just to kind of recap, is we've we've rolled out to February. So we've extended duration. And we've rolled our untested side down. And so what, by doing this, we're still giving ourselves some room to the upside, as, you know, playing that contrarian role, assuming it's going to be, you know, price is a lot of times cyclical in nature. So we still give ourselves more room to the upside, but we've collected more credit and we've rolled out to the next cycle. Got it. Got it. Too easy. So go ahead and ship that one in. Okay. Get this confirm and send and send sucker. Oh, that one didn't apparently take right away, but didn't take right away. But we got a couple other things to do. So in this case, let's just let that order sit for a second. Yep, can do that. And the other thing we we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add another position in that gas. If you click on, go ahead and click on UNG for a second, the ETF. And then go to the chart tab. I just want to take a glance at where implied volatility is. So you can see the percentile is still, you know, 98. IV rank is at 79, so really high, you know, one of the highest on the on the board out there. Mm -hmm. So not only are we going to adjust, but I want to go ahead and add another position on in that gas because it's, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, we're getting a lot of credit there for putting on new positions. And with a few weeks left, left, we're going to Good go ahead and it. we're going to go ahead and be pretty aggressive and, and, you know, try to put on some positions to get, get some of that, get some profit over the next few weeks. Um, not the UNG, but the slash NG. So put basically the same thing that we just did. We're just going to put on a new uh, thing. Exactly. Yep, exactly. New position. Okay. So Back to trade. To trade tab. What a... Go ahead and take that little <laughs> order entry toolbar down below with the, with the arrow and the line. Go ahead and take that down so we got a little bit more room. There you go. All right, that looks a lot better. Now... Let's say if we put a new one on, we could put it around 20, say 21. If we're putting on a brand new. Yep, exactly. Yep. Okay, so. Strike. And then. So much, so much stuff on here. Yeah, actually, just minimize that position uh, box right there, right above this it. one. Yep. Yeah, that'll work. I can work with this. And I think yeah. that one was the twenty. I think it was right around twenty-one. If we do the same thing over here, where we're going to be right around twenty. Yeah, let's do the twenty. So the two point five on the put side. Yep. Five. And analyze that. Uh, 
It's kind of curved. Did I miss something on that? Normally no, it's a little you, flat. No, you didn't. You didn't miss anything. This is just a little quirk in um, in uh, in Toss. So what what you'll want to do is just um, go over to your watch list over there and scroll mm -hmm. all the way to the bottom. And at the very bottom, type in forward slash NGF8. Okay. And then click on that. Guess that works. And uh. then, um, well, where did it go? Oh, I'm sorry. I know what happened. So go go to your go to your trade tab. So this is uh -huh. this is just one of the quirky things about about futures. So um, yeah, the 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 NGF8 is actually the one with 18 days to expiration. Click on the click on the forward slash NG up above there real quick. Uh, I'm sorry, which one? Right above UNG, the forward slash NG. Got it. This one right here. Yeah. So the cycle with with 49 days left is actually NGG8. As you can see right there next uh -huh. to the 49. NG so, so down below there, do forward slash NGG8. Got it. There we go. And then go to your Analyze tab. So there you go. That looks that looks like what we're looking for. I need to reset those. Yeah, I probably do. Yep. Reset or set slices. Break even. 27. 70% square in the middle for now. Yep. But, uh, I would take it. Maybe. So, so here's, uh, here's what I want to do. Now, for those watching at home, I, I don't suggest doing this. So, but because, because you need to be taking a, you know, in, in trading for your account, you need to be taking a long-term approach, right? In, in the case of what we're doing here for Matt, is we've only got a few weeks left, and I want to try to get him some profit, and I'm willing to take that risk. This is this is my money in the account, and as long as Matt's okay with it as well, I mean he has you, Matt. You really have nothing to lose. But, um, <laughs> oh, and we just got filled on that adjustment. Yep. So we're in that. So uh, go ahead and uncheck the position down below. Just leave the red box checked. We got filled, uh. so it popped in, it popped in. So. Uh, in this case, instead of just doing one contract, so as you can see up there in the upper left, we've got over $36,000 of buying power available, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I'd like to do is I'd like to, instead of just doing one contract for this new position, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and kick that up to, uh, let's kick that up to three or down to three, I should say. Excuse me. And then uh, hover over your. So we're looking at a max uh, profit of almost three thousand now, with three yep. contracts. And um, before we send it all the way, go ahead and right-click on your red box and confirm and send. Let's see how much buying power that's going to take. There it is. Looking at three thousand. About three thousand there. So let's go ahead and go ahead and cancel out of that. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and kick that up to five contracts. Uh, going aggressive style. All right. Yep. So we've got got about five about five thousand of potential capital there. So mm -hmm. let, yeah. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and ship that. Kick that uh, the price down to um, kick it down to point oh nine eight. And we should, okay. get, should get filled there. So let's go ahead and ship that one in. Okay. Yeah. Confirm and send. Right about 5000 bucks. That's what I suspected. Yep. Send. There it is. Sold. Filled. So think about this. I mean, again, we've, we're, we're kind of taking a shot here, right? We've got three weeks to go. We're, we're loading up on something that has the highest implied volatility. So giving us the best best chance to potentially make some profit. Uh, now we've got 31,000 of capital. I'd like to I'd like to add a couple more things just to, you know, I don't want to go I don't want to go below I don't want to uh, use more than 50% of our capital. 
Mm-hmm. But I do, but we still have, you know, $6,000 or let's say $5,000 more of capital to, uh, to get some positions on. And so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and take a shot. Yeah, all right, let's do it. So we, we kind of went through some of the symbols and, and a lot of the premiums getting sucked out. All the, you know, the implied volatility is going down in a lot of cases. But uh, one thing we looked at was go ahead and click on forward slash ZS, which is soybeans. Set the charts tab there. And like a- yeah, and for anyone who's who's, cha- who's traded the grains, you know that the implied volatility indicator is not accurate in this case. However, we we did a little bit of uh, recon before before we started recording just to see what kind of credit we would get and kind of the the amount of credit that we get or potential profit versus the amount of capital used in soybeans was pretty attractive still. So let's go ahead and put on a position in soybeans. Okay, just come on back over here to the trade tab, and I'm going to get rid of this real quick. We're looking at February at 49 here, and uh, we're looking at 24 or 19. 19. 19. I think if I ever do this on my own for good, I'll probably just always do strangles because that's what I'm so used to doing. <laughs> and then here, probably yeah. 22. Yeah, we could go 16 or 22. I'd, 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 uh, I'd default to the 22. Okay. It's 970. I think that's what we did on our recon as well. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so let's go ahead and analyze that puppy. Oh, there's the trade. Here we are. So about 550 per. Is our max profit? About 550 per contract. So yep. let's go ahead and um, let's see. I think it was taking about a thousand dollars per contract here. So let's let's go ahead and kick this up to. Uh, let's go ahead and do this at five contracts as well. Okay. And puts us at uh, two thousand seven fifty. Yep. And we can. I can just look and see. What that buying power would be up here, right? About five thousand on that. Yeah. You ready to send this out? Anything else you wanted to look at? No. Yeah. Let's go ship it. Let's go ahead and ship it. Okay. That one's out. Out and in. Out and in. Uh, I like. I like the. I like where we're going with this one. So. Yeah. So we're we're kind of maxed out on our capital usage. Now we just kind of you know again we're. Again, I, I don't suggest doing this at home just because, uh, I mean, we're, we're being responsible from a standpoint of we're still only using half of our capital, you know, so we're not super overextended completely, but we are loaded pretty heavily in just a couple of symbols. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and again, that, that's, that's just because we only have a few weeks left and I want to, I want to take a shot to try to get some, get some profit for you. Yeah. Now, I mean, if for those for those folks at, at home, like if we're, I think what you're looking at is, hey, don't go so heavy on um, just a few. But you're saying if you were to do this at home and you want it and you have the money to put into this, you, you're thinking diversify a little bit more. Like it's okay to put the money into what what's out there, but just diversify a little more. That way you're not you don't have all your money or all your eggs in the same basket. Is that yeah. what you're getting out with that? Yeah, exactly. We we would be okay. in more than just four symbols. You you know we might have it spread out between ten. Yeah, it's just there, it's, it's a little difficult to do that in this case because we're, you know, trying to record these sessions to let everybody know and, and really just try to get you up to speed and, you know, just focus on a few symbols. But, yeah, you're yeah. exactly right, Matt. Yeah, there really wasn't. Uh, I mean, right now, there really wasn't a, a ton. There wasn't a ton to go into anyway. Right. So um, I think what we're doing is I, I think we picked a few symbols that are, you know, have some pretty good probabilities of giving us a good return so you know i'm happy with what we're doing cool so now we just hope that nat gas plays nice and and soybeans <laughs> and yeah and, yeah and nq continues to 
to uh, participate in what we need as well. So it's time for a time for a Christmas miracle, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> All right, Santa Claus, don't let us down. <laughs> Sounds good to me, man. I, I thank you for all the all the time that you've put into this with me in the last uh, couple months. So. Sounds good. Well, we will sign off here, Matt, and we will talk again soon. All right. Take care.